invite the panelists for the second panel discussion, which is digitization of campus recruitment placement. So we'll have Professor Vibha Thakur, the Joint Director Training and Placement and Associate Professor Sharda University. We welcome you, Dr. Thakur. We have Ms. Sangeeta Sharma, the Training and Placement Officer from IIIT Bhagalpur. So we welcome you, Ms. Sharma. We have Dr. Sheetal Kumar Ravandale, the President of Maharashtra TP Association. We welcome you, sir. We have Ms. Anshiya Madan. She is the Head Career Services from IIT Delhi. We welcome you, Ms. Madan. We have Mr. Sandeep Rao, the Digital Strategies Going Digital. Hello, sir. And I would also like to invite Mr. Bhopesh Theria. Uh, he'll be the one uh, who's the founder and director of MUNI campus and he'll moderate the event. I hope uh, Mr. San uh, Mr. Sheetal Kumar will soon join us. Uh, so over to you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you so much. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation. <clears throat> I think you have cut up uh, the context for our discussion as well. So I'm really glad and welcome all of you, Sandeep, uh, Professor Vibha, uh, Ms. Sangeeta, uh, Ms. Anshia, and uh, Professor Sheetal to this panel discussion. And uh, this panel discussion is uh, pretty appropriate in the time of when the on-campus campus placement is moving towards virtual and earlier panel discussion we have seen. The trend is moving more on virtual, uh, hybrid, and now one of the days that we'll see the complete uh, on-ground campus. Some or other part will happen online. Uh, so in this background, this is a pretty relevant uh, topic, uh, digitization of campus recruitment cells, uh, which we can also call a career management, uh, career development center. Now, so all of you are expert in this area and day and night you're using uh, digital services to facilitate campus recruitment. So uh, I will start with Sandeep. Sandeep, uh, you are expert for uh, digital transformation, right? And uh, other industries, they have uh, seen the fruits of digital transformation. So I would request to set up uh, the context why digital transformation is important. And uh, particularly in this higher education and within higher education, uh, this particular piece, which is campus recruitment, internship, uh, career development. Over to you, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you, Bupesh. So obviously, digital transformation is a buzzword nowadays, and there is no option but to get digital. And that's why my company's name is also going digital. But uh, typically, see what happens. Um, there are three areas which digital transformation as a thing uh, impacts. One obviously is the customer experience. Now in this scenario, customer is all about your placement offices, your employers, your students, college faculty, everybody who is involved into campus recruitment process. Mm -hmm. Those are really the customer. And how do you improve their life? That's mm -hmm. where digital transformation helps. I mean, people again are confused about transformation. Mm -hmm. It's nothing but acknowledging and adopting all these digital technologies which are available at your you know fingertips and ensure that it is impacting the end consumer and that's why retail was one of the fastest mover or adapter of digital transformation because we are the consumers and we know uh, better than the person who is selling a smartphone or uh, television and things like that right so it's ex extremely important to get into this bandwagon and ensure that you're finally improving the lives of the stakeholders who are involved. Uh, talking about benefits, obviously there are plenty and many, but the first and the foremost is end-to-end -end placement functionality and visibility, transparency. That's where it's, uh, you know, helps when you think about digitizing the placement and um, all these processes. Because placement sales can now post filter, manage an entire placement process and place thousands of students during this short placement window with these. And there are multiple benefits. I mean, we can keep on talking, but I'll, you know, go back to you to understand and hear from other leaders as well. It's, it's extremely important to get on digital because that's the way you can improve the lives of all the stakeholders who are involved. 
Thank you, Sandeep. You rightly said that it's about bringing the customer or various stakeholders at center and improving yeah. their experience. Absolutely. Uh, and this digitization brings transparency and transparency further leads to trust. Correct. And that is what uh, leads to building up a brand. Uh, I simply say brand is nothing, your ability to deliver what you say. Right. Perfect. And consistently top institutions have delivered that yes, they're offering the best quality and consistently they are doing it. And that's the reason they have built the brand. Yeah. And uh, this, I recall one of the incidents uh, almost 15 years back, when in fact digitization started in this campus placement. Uh, so there was a very ugly, messy situation which has occurred by one of the leading company in campus recruitment in Central India. Okay. I will not name the company, neither I'll name the institution. Uh, there were roughly around six to 7,000 students participated in the campus. And 95% of the students, those who were actually selected in final campus, were by the host institution. And uh, majority of the candidate actually came from the different parts of the state. Means they, uh, they traveled in a train and bus overnight, uh, reached to there anyhow. And uh, it was a summer time. And finally, in evening, they realized that uh, only 5% of the candidates were selected other than the host institution. And this actually sparked a violence. There was a riot, <clears throat> there was a fire, the police has to come, there was a lati charge, and the HR head was about to lose his job. Uh, he was close to me, he called me up, uh, that saved me, and you have some online technology. And that's how we started India's first online campus recruitment testing way back in 2006. And this testing has brought in very simple trans transparency. I would call it, that was very uh, simple thing to do online testing because online testing was pretty much everywhere other than this campus recruitment. They still you used to do paper pen and the local training placement officer used to pass it to other colleges, all those kind of malpractices were there. So this actually brought in huge transparency, build the brand of the company and help them to really get better candidates from multiple places. So that was a simple story. Uh, when you mentioned about brand, it triggered my memory. Uh, <clears throat> coming to you, Dr. Vibha, you have uh, also been involved into uh, building up uh, educational uh, uh, ERPs and you are with one of the largest uh, private universities in North. Uh, what is your opinion about uh, bringing digitization uh, or digital transformation, uh, not complete university-wide, but particularly this function, which is campus recruitment, career development? Over to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, inviting me here. So, uh, yes, because, you know, digitization is the need of the hour. And the university like Sharda, we are, you know, we are having 13,000 plus student base. And out of that, 2,000 plus students from 93 foreign nations mm -hmm. are, you know, our USP is the diversity and inclusiveness. But it's really difficult to cater all the needs of these students having diverse background. They are from tier three cities, tier two cities, tier one cities, even some are from rural areas also, having students from 93 countries. And you know, being a private university, and I'm into training and placement from last 12 years and uh, total experience is 20 plus years. So, you know, every student is important for us. Their dreams are important for us. So how we can map that, how we can cater their needs, this is only possible with the distribution. And transparency is also important. Because, you know, when students come for the admission, they are taking admission in any course, okay? Mm -hmm. They would like to understand the placement record. Mm -hmm. And we need to become transparent for that. Because we cannot go with this. If we are working for nation building and if we are looking us, uh, looking ourselves as a, you know, the leader of uh, at the global uh, perspective, 
then we should be transparent. We should go with the quality and we should understand that, you know, every student is important. If they want to be entrepreneur, if they want to go for the higher education to abroad, we need to assist them. We need to do handholding. Then only they would understand that we are working for them. And uh, like, we have 13,000 students and uh, 138 plus programs we are offering. And every program having different requirement, different needs. So without digital transformation, it is not possible to cater their needs. This is it and so many things there. So Thank let's you. discuss later. Thank, Thank you, Professor Viva. Uh, <clears throat> I'll come back to you. Uh, Miss Anisha, uh, since you're with IIT Delhi and IIT Delhi and IIT Bombay, we're one of the pioneers in terms of really building up a central uh, career development uh, portal or a placement cell portal. Uh, you were one of the pioneers in terms of adoption of uh, digitization in this area. Uh, so two questions to you. Uh, what were the need? One. Uh, the second, what kind of benefits you have seen this digital uh, platform has brought in on this campus recruitment to you? Okay, uh, the need was many, many years back. Actually, when I joined, I, I took over this function. It was training and placement, and now we've sort of grown into career services. Right. So um, it was already digitized, and that was more than 12 years ago, right? Right. Uh, like you rightly said, I think digitization maybe started 15 years or maybe for us slightly earlier than that mm -hmm. because you mentioned 15 years. Uh, the need was because paper-based uh, in the previous panel, they were talking about the test, liya, ferroscope, uh, collate, kia, and what uh, my uh, old staff, many of whom have now retired, used to tell me was there was a time when they made a big file and then they made Bana ke, fir post kiya jata tha, a, a world that I can't even imagine, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like Vibha man pointed out, the sheer uh, number of students that uh, over time have grown, you know, uh, yeah. you couldn't have handled those numbers if you were not digitized. Right. Jab wo paper based hota tha system, tab IIT ka intake X number hota tha. Aaj, oh. it is an exponential number of that. So maybe at that time it worked despite the number of programs. Also, our number of programs have expanded. Right. And life only gets more complicated, right? Right. We never go back. We everybody wants growth. Even yeah. education wants growth. Right, right. So um, uh, I think uh, digitization, we were pioneers because maybe we saw it coming, but uh, it's just been good that we've always been able to, you know, keep ourselves abreast and ahead most of the time. Uh, the second part of your question, I'm sorry. What benefit you have seen? Yeah, so the benefit, uh, uh, like I said, when COVID hit us, right? Uh, many of the institutions were still struggling with, they had started thinking on those lines, but they right. were still not there. Right. For us, the system already existed. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, COVID happened, digitization was there. How it helped me was that many companies that were still not on board, were pushed to get on board mm -hmm. because there was a set of companies who said that you have a login, but my IT doesn't allow me to do it. IT allows me to allow me to do it. I think it was sheer laziness. Right. Why do I do it when I have a POC that I can assign to? Right. 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 But it's a mindset, right? Right. COVID helped us change that mindset. Or maybe that change mm -hmm. had to happen, but it fastened that mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the benefit was we were ready when things happened. Mm -hmm. We could help people understand the challenges that were there, mm -hmm. even handhold them into mm -hmm. ki process karana hai, online GD kaise hogi. Mm -hmm. I had a few HR people who told me ki, online mein ab GD kaise karaoge. I said, aap batao. <laughs> that was how it was. <laughs> so I was wrong your process, that how it will be done is our problem. <laughs> right. 
so mindset change was not only the issue at institution end but also at the enterprise end that's what i'm, I'm trying to say ki even the, see people are the same everywhere right right so all of us got pushed into a situation the good part was maybe we were prepared that's so we handled it slightly better than others good so i think other will also uh, gain from this sympathetic view that they are not the alone uh, those who are facing the mindset challenge <laughs> it really also faced the mindset challenge no everybody faces it across yeah. <laughs> so i i read a report which actually published this data that iit delhi iit bombay iit kharagpur these three institution together has produced roughly around 20 times more startup founders than ivy league mit stanford wharton kellogg uh, so definitely you should be ahead of in terms of digitization when your students are rolling the world Uh, Thank you so, so much. So coming to you, uh, Dr. Sheetal Kumar, uh, you are also uh, handling the life and career of your students at your college, but at the same time, you're also president for uh, Maharashtra Training Placement Officers Association. Uh, Apprise us that what kind of challenges uh, your association and your peer training placement officers were facing, and how those challenges. Uh, We are overcome by digitization, and what extent is it is still buzzword or there is some reality? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, team uh, Bupesh and your your entire M Uni team and all the uh, fellow panel members for giving this opportunity to have some sort of interaction. So as per challenges are concerned, there were many challenges. Uh, first of all, the companies were not ready with their systems, right? Initially, in the first phase of lockdown, and okay. suddenly it came. So uh, there were problems. Some Uh, some of the recruitment drives were cancelled because they would uh, there were certain limitations from the government side but okay. to be frank when there is a will there is a way so right. slowly we started with maybe options like zoom and then uh, maybe other other uh, uh, tools were there but yeah. apart from that people wanted to conduct the drives and uh, that was that was actually to be conducted by the some of the colleges started then uh, to approach them sir we have this many students how to go ahead right okay. so some companies who were already having some solutions they came up and they provided certain solutions right. so uh, we we at uh, maharashtra level also we tried to find out some solutions we got some solutions from technical experts as well as some of the companies told us that you can use this kind of as ma'am also said anisha ma'am said uh, how to uh, conduct the gds is our problem so we tried to solve those problems and up to certain extent we were quite successful in that but it really helped a lot afterwards because now today you see uh, earlier when the drives happened entire day tpos were uh, busy they were conducting maybe small small activities like arranging for logistics maybe their stay and then uh, arranging food and all that not only for panel members for the students volunteers everybody uh, has to be taken care of but nowadays tpos can invest that much of time entire days time he can invest in calling and reaching out to other companies because everything right. has become online only mm-hmm. one thing he has to do one or two volunteers student mm-hmm. volunteers especially they have to be connected with the hr and then the hr and that team they conduct the entire process similarly if you see the other side companies are also happy because sitting at chennai bangalore pune mumbai whatever location the hr can just uh, log in give the log in to his panel members and parallelly to the shortlisted students and for online test now almost sufficient number of solutions are there with smart tools right so i think um, many many challenges were overcome by the technologies and people are enjoying now right and i think here onwards even though there will be some of the mixed mode or hybrid modes but uh, online modes will prevail and they are getting smarter uh, day by day as far as uh, as far as students are concerned initially they face certain challenges because uh, in remote places uh, networks were not clear all the students were not having those handsets or earphones or continuous electricity was not there but slowly people understood small small solution like small inverters etc were the solutions we were asking them in whichever locations uh, 
colleges were having uh, good internet connectivity and norms were not that tough so they joined through colleges but things happen and uh, nowadays i think uh, it's it's the best way i will i will suggest because it is saving the time cost and uh, yes some errors are there uh, some of the uh, some hr hr members also say that yes there are certain uh, uh, certain things or problems which have to be taken care of at student side or even uh, the company side so those will be rectified in a in a coming time and probably this will be the best solution sir i think wonderful wonderful <clears throat> dr sheetal so you are saying that digital is a way and this massive digitization actually paved the way for virtual campuses otherwise right. virtual campuses would have not been possible and the student would have suffered the way they have suffered in examination at least they have not suffered in terms of getting the job and uh, all of us we uh, will agree that in we have not seen such kind of placement boom in last 20 years what we have seen during the covid period so this uh, digitization layer uh, has actually helped this virtual campus and as you rightly said the future to go is about uh, virtual campuses uh, a hybrid campuses right and part of the process will be done like for example examination online and interview or pre placement talk point can happen on campus and even i would like to add one point sir earlier uh, getting company person at the campus uh, the frequency was very less right i will tell you even in those first 2 3 months we had conducted almost 50 to 55 top notch industry professionals uh, lectures or uh, online sessions and not only for one or two colleges or for a cities college students but for entire maharashtra students and uh, colleges we could conduct many of such expert sessions and uh, in fact our uh, people were saying no now it's enough <laughs> that kind of uh, situation was there that and uh, that to happen very nicely and right. expert right. people they they could uh, also devote time and industry people are finding it very easy nowadays Uh, most of the ceos hr heads even technical heads they are reaching out to faculty students and it has given another means to maybe industry academia relations nowadays uh, rightly said since this industry academia uh, buzzword i have been hearing for last 25 years in various conferences but it has never seen a light this covid has actually gave it us gave it us on the plate uh, sure. this digital Uh, although we talk about a lot of digital divide which is a reality but digitization has also uh, broken down the various ba- barriers which was brought upon students and of course academic institution and primarily these were the location barriers uh, socio economic barriers because if you are in remote place you will never have access to the equal opportunity uh, thanks to this digitization and virtual campus that even if you are in remote place you can really appear for Uh, Amazon or top companies interview or aptitude test. You don't have to be in uh, metros. So these were some uh, good points this digitization has uh, brought in. Of course, there are some challenges uh, of internet connectivity, devices, right? Uh, still, uh, HR are missing that point of applying their gut feel. Uh, still missing face-to-face interactions. Anyway, so <clears throat> coming to you, Ms. Sangeeta. uh <clears throat> what are your views and what are the initiatives you are at, taking at triple uh, it bhagalpur uh, am i audible yes I, yes I yes yes, yes please you loud and clear okay okay so uh, thank you everyone and uh, thank you bhupeshji for inviting me here so uh, i would say uh, as we all are talking about digitalization so it's a need of our and uh, we all know that uh, in covid time how we have managed everything online at being at home without any difficulty yes there were few difficulty but we were able to manage and uh, we made lot of changes like uh, we we had to make our students informed in prior so they can be there at that time and we have to continuously you know uh, call them yes you have to be there your interview is scheduled so those things we had to do but yes it was quite manageable and it was easy i mean we have a lot of uh, 
technical stuff that we are dealing with, a lot of platforms that we are using. So we have changed the platforms. We are using Zoom, Link, Meet, uh, Google Meeting. So a lot of things we are starting using now that we were not doing earlier. But right. yes, one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction that is missing. We all would agree on that. And that is also important. So yes, we need to change according to technology. So we all are adapting to this new change. So that's, that's all my view, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad that these uh, digital tools are helping you to overcome your location disadvantage. Uh, yes, and, and I, I would like to add that uh, I am working with Drupal IQ Bhagal for uh, past one year, and uh, I have not visited the campus yet. So oh. I started in August. Yes, I started in August uh, 2021, and I'm still working from home. Mm -hmm. Even students are not there on campus because the situation is not that good. So, yeah, that's a perfect example. <laughs> that's a perfect example. Yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, coming to you, uh, Sandeep. Uh, so, although universities are trying to really grab hold of various, say, tools, uh, I will still not call it a unified, fluid, uh, flexible platform. Uh, which are rigid in, in nature, but at least they have started. Uh, and digitization is not only about technology, right? So what do you think that, what are the key challenges uh, you face, uh, your experiences in industry and how do we really see those challenges? Because person will be same yeah. uh, as uh, Ms. Madana said, person in enterprise and education both are the same. What are the challenges are there in digital adoption or digital transformation uh, other than technology? Well, I would say the topmost showstopper is the cultural change, cultural transformation, because people, all of us are habitual of doing something in some manner. And all the universities or placement offices, they have spent so much time and years in doing something in some way now changing that to digital or you know adopting something is where the reluctance come into picture <clears throat> mm -hmm. and that's where uh, i have seen even in all other areas wherever we talk about digital transition cultural reluctance cultural change is the top most showstopper because people are not ready to change they want to do the same things what they were doing so far and that's okay. where you know encouraging and giving them the benefit showing them that if you do this mm -hmm. how much effectiveness how much productivity how much easiness you will get into your operations you will have better communication you will have online job notification because otherwise it's i mean you must have seen that indian idol show right <laughs> so mm -hmm. many people are there flocking for auditions and imagine if they don't apply such kind of digitization you know taking those resumes taking their things into picture and then categorizing them segmenting them so that's where the huge um you know digitization helps a lot if you are into doing all this in physical world there is no way you can manage all these things. And there are competitors. I mean, if you don't do it, there is someone who will come in and you know take your job, take your place, and things will move on. So it's like any Tom, Dick, and Harry can come in and push you out of your business. Mm -hmm. So that's why cultural change, really you know, taking employees, placement officers, everybody into your stride and right. helping them understand the vision. Mm -hmm. why digital transformation and what is in it for me as an individual i always have that question what is in it for me everybody will have that right. so if you tell that properly then people will start adopting so technology is just the enabler right. whether you drive maruti or whether you drive bmw it's just the vehicle right so right. technology is just the enabler you have to have that mindset that yes this will help my life much better and even the student's life much better. That's what I would say is to be tackled going forward. Yeah, so technology, you can invest millions of dollars to buy or you can really get it free of cost. Yep. So you have a liberty in terms of a choice. Uh, easy to really grab. Uh, of course, difficult to really build, but easy to really get, get the yep. right choices. Yep. Uh, 
Yes. But changing mindset is 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 really uh, a daunting task, and that's what I have seen. Like I started this digitization journey in two thousand two, and uh, what I have not seen in twenty years that COVID has done. Yes, <laughs> because that was a question of survival, right? So uh, twenty years digitization, you can really wrap it up in six months. <laughs> True. Right. So uh, directors are calling up and saying, okay. We want online examination, hybrid online examination. Yeah. Now we can't really run examination beyond that. Uh, in traditional Absolutely. way. So uh, it was forced, but uh, still I see digitization has not been done. Just buying tools uh, cannot say that we are digitized. Digital literacy, mindset change. And this mindset change uh, is there at a top level or everywhere. Over to you, Viva. Professor Vipa. Yes, so mindset change, of course, from bottom to top. Mm -hmm. We all need to understand this, the like what all problems we are facing. If I say, if I, we are talking about the placement process, I've divided it into, uh, you know, three categories. Right. Pre-placement pre activities, placement mm -hmm. activities, and post-placement activities, right. which is rather more important for any higher education institution or university. Because all higher education institutions, universities, we are looking for very good ranking, very right. good accreditation grades, okay? And for that, documentation is the key. Right. If you are right. conducting something, you need to be, the activity should be, uh, needed to be documented. So digitization is just making our things easier. So if we are talking about the pre-placement activities, you know, the placement activities starts with the analyzing the student's interest. Right. In their first year on this. So we are requiring one platform which could cater all these needs in their, even in, you know, before their admission, we should have some psychometric tests so that we can understand their skill, their potential, their trends, and we can offer them courses on the basis of their skill sets. Once they are getting the admission, we should have another round of testing so that we, that would be the assessment test. Okay, then we can see how they are, uh, you know, uh, taking their courses. And then we should have that reassessment because we are addressing their needs. We are understanding that what challenges they are having. We are addressing their challenges. We are conducting the skill classes. And then we, the reassessment will see how they have done, how, like, what for, uh, like, how far they have gone, okay? And then the last phase is the career fitment test. Right. Career fitment test, after this, this, we could go for the placement activities, inviting oh, companies oh. and one more thing, like uh, companies are coming uh, with the eligibility criteria. Oh, oh, that oh. should be changed. Right. Reason? Because, you know, they are asking for BCom, BBA, BTEC, BSc. Oh. No, oh. it should be changed. Why? Because you are coming with a profile. What right. skill set you need for this profile, that should be the eligibility criteria. Oh. So we need to change this thing also. Okay. Oh. And uh, after this, the eligibility criteria is changed. You have the uh, things that what should be required, then you will be conducting the classes, you are preparing your students, then you are conducting the placement process. We all understand that placement process, aptitude, GD, interview, right. everything could be disguised and we can go for the planted mode also. Testing could be disguised and interview could be the, uh, you know, person uh, in person, face to face. And the next phase is the post placement activities where right. we need offer letters, we need to analyze the trends also right. for preparing our next batch. Because there are, you know, the trends are changing very rapidly. So if we understand what profiles are booming and what profiles are, you know, uh, now not in trend, then we can work accordingly. So I'm from computer science. So because of that, I have that, you know, strong uh, belief that if the things are going with the technology, you will be, your result will be, you know, uh, increasing in exponential ratio. So right. for me, you know, this is all how it is possible because if you would be able to see the result, if you have that foreseeing, okay. And the next thing, one more thing I would like to say, if, uh, if you allow me. Please. Uh, yes. 
if after pandemic this entire world becomes a global village right mm -hmm. so now you are not only uh, you know preparing your students for multinational companies which are working here in india you have to prepare your students for with you know uh, that should be synced with the international trends how right international companies are asking and you know uh, like we are having i have, very recently i have attended one uh, conference that uh, was organized by uh, secc uh, mm -hmm. skilling and internationalization mm -hmm. of uh, uh, higher education so uh, you know uh, there uh, the question was raised why we uh, like we are very much after the international students we want mm. international students to come mm. to our university and they should study here okay so the next thing is we are increasing the competition for our own students because the question uh, what the question was raised by uh, one uh, uh, attendant that uh, why we are not providing one year uh, working visa with the student visa so mm. Uh, sir, you have to, you know, foresee this thing because this is the, this is coming. Now, this is the next problem you need to address. And uh, I see you as a leader, the um, Unicampus, that uh, you are there. So you could see the, foresee the problems and you could add, you know, address them advance because this is going to be happen. So right. thank you very much <laughs> for this much time. Thank you, Professor Viva. So you rightly said that... Uh... <clears throat> this whole uh, technology tools, right? Technology platform should help you to gather the customer data. And uh, here our central customer is basically student. And we cannot be reactive, we need to be proactive. So before in hand, at the time of the admission, while the examination and during the four years or three year process, we need to have enough data about the student so that we can really offer segment for one. So uh, slowly and gradually, these days will be over when the companies will come and hire in thousands number and take in truck, which trend has again come back, but I don't think that is going to long last. Uh, and even the candidate's aspiration has changed in previous panels where we have seen that now candidates are wanting to go for the product company, right? A startup company, they have their aspiration, they know what precisely they want. That also increases our challenge manifold, right? That we need to offer segment for one while industry is going for the segment one. Education institutions, higher ed also need to wake up to this call of send, uh, a segment for one. And for that, we need data, right? And when four or five or 10 or 20 candidates are there, you can really keep the data in your mind. But when you have 1,000, 13,000 candidates, uh, it is impossible. It is difficult to even remember the faculty names. You need platform which collate the data and give you the actionable insight, not only to you, to the recruiter and to the student so that you, we don't bring in our own personal bias because bias also uh, creates a whole lot of problem. Uh, thank you so much for uh, these points. I just elaborated. You, you have that very valid point. And now we are left with uh, another 15 minutes. So I would keep it open rather than just bounding it into some questions, uh, directed questions. Uh, but, uh, let me open it to all the panelists. If you have anything in your mind which you wanted to really share your experience, uh, which could contribute to this uh, panel or agenda of this conference, uh, please feel free. And meanwhile, I also appeal to the audience, if you have any questions, uh, please write in this uh, question box or chat. Uh, you can write the name if you want some particular person to really address those questions. With this note, again, I come back to you, uh, Dr. Sheetal Kumar. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what are your thoughts like uh, on this uh, trend of digitization which is growing? Uh, what are the obstacles uh, you practically see in mass level of adoption beyond these conferences? Because I see there is a huge gap. So as far as scaling for the companies is concerned, that was a problem because uh, suppose uh, companies like mass recruiters, they wanted to reach out to lakhs of students. Right. So earlier it was huge time involved. So nowadays it is quite easy for them. TCS 
runs one test and uh, uh, maybe at different time slots, but at a time they can uh, they can tackle all the students. So that scaling was initially an issue which has been solved. And earlier it took almost three, four months for such companies to conduct drives. Then they used to go to first tier one, then tier two, tier three. Nowadays at a time they can start the recruitment drives and level of difficulty if they want to keep different for maybe different job profiles or different colleges. So they can, they can uh, do that also. So that has become a really uh, easy task for them. But at the same time, if we see students' challenges, earlier students, suppose in our college, suppose sometimes one recruitment drive is happening and yesterday's uh, with whatever company he has appeared or before two days, he has to give now the interview of that. He has, he has been shortlisted. So that has also become very much possible right so some some of the things which were earlier not possible in uh, uh, what we can say uh, regular <laughs> offline trials that has become possible one more important point i would like to highlight here as far as tpos are concerned their challenge regarding maybe maintain, maintaining the database of the students, collection of that database. Earlier, they used to get maybe hard copies. Then they used to convert it into Excel. Then right. instead of Excel, they used online Excel sheets, Google maybe Google, yeah. Google Drive, etc. But slowly now, people uh, like your, your team and many, many other people are there to guide and uh, they are helping. Solutions are there. Technical uh, digitization solutions are available. And now it is very easy for us to maintain attendance once the student reaches immediately. People have come up with scanners also. Just scan it and the student's attendance is maintained. Once the results are declared, immediately the student volunteers can log in uh, through their uh, maybe uh, given uh, particular uh, admin logins and they can immediately mention SMS goes to students. The students, right. whoever are shortlisted, immediately in next five days, wherever they are there in the campus, they can come and attend the interviews. One right. message goes to a company also that, yes, these many students are uh, available right now. So I think uh, technology has uh, made many positive changes also. And these changes are uh, well appreciated by the uh, TPOs also. And here onwards, maybe existing ERPs were uh, earlier for maybe exams or maybe admissions, etc. But now for placements also, especially for uh, placement department, there are many tools which are available and many TPOs are uh, using it uh, very, very effectively. Only maybe uh, some sort of uh, some sort of issues were, were earlier there, like maybe data uh, was not secure, etc. But now many solutions are there and data is also uh, quite safe in uh, if, if the um, providers, uh, service providers, etc. they are maintaining proper care, then that data theft is also not a problem. Now, data security, data privacy was one of the major concerns among universities and TPO and it's still that is a concern. And that is where like a company like ours, we sign the NDA and we are committed that we will not be selling data to any third party. And the data will be only primarily used for any information or any guidance related to their <clears throat> career only, not to sell them laptop or any other thing. Neither the data will be downloadable, just like majority of the job sites offer the data download practices. And, uh, but even the regulatory framework is also changing. When <laughs> this Data Protection Act will be implemented, the sharing of Google Sheet or Excel Sheet will be prohibited. Because we, as a training placement officers or a career development uh, center head, uh, we are the custodian of the data. And we there will be a lot of, there are a lot of fake companies which used to really send the request, run the campus drive and take the data. And those things are going to be passed. Of course, hacking and those stuff, nobody can really take a guarantee because that's a reality. Even those companies, those who are selling the solution to protect other system, they are being hacked. So there are two kinds of people exist, those who know that they are hacked and those who do not know that they are hacked. <laughs> so anyway, so yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hackathon ka matlab hi hai. What are your hacking skills? All right. <laughs> So, so over to you, uh, Ms. Madan, uh, <clears throat> that uh, what kind of activities, like if somebody has to really design a placement management suit, somebody has to really start because 
lot of institutions, not everybody looks at IITs and IIMs uh, as a pinnacle, right? In terms of system, in terms of quality education. Uh, what are your thoughts? If somebody has to break down this whole campus management suit, what are the uh, main component uh, you will advise that these are the main components should be there uh, as a part of platform? I, I saw that uh, presentation with, uh, which Madam Ram had done, and I think you all have sort of pretty much figured out most of it, right? Because it was done really well. It is going from one to five, and all of those things are covered. Mm -hmm. Few things that could be added, which was what uh, Professor Sheetal mentioned, was like uh, the uh, attendance management of the right. students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was missing out there, right. for example. Tracking a student ki usne interview mein kab andar ghusa, kab bahar ghusa, part of attendance management. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Just a few small uh, things which are, would not, I'm sure would not be very difficult for you to do, but right. in all what I could see that Seagull Street is pretty comprehensive in, in right. what I could see out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you so much. So right from like, so uh, traditional software where pretty much rule-based rigid structures, now the modern trend is uh, instead of bringing rigidity, uh, create systems which can offer you dynamic workflow management. Yeah, so basically. maybe you have a different uh, workflow. Uh, Sarda is having different workflow. Mr. Sheetal may have a different workflow. IT Bodh Gaya will have a different workflow, right? So you can have your own dynamic workflow. Uh, you can re reuse some digital assets and open in frame. Like, for example, if somebody want to use Zoom, they can use Zoom. Somebody want to use Team, uh, any other platform. So it should be interoperable with multiple platforms. You should not feel locked. And one of the most important aspect is, uh, of course, the security aspect. It should really take care of the security. And it should be scalable. Uh, it should be mobile, right? It should be user-centric and it should use the AI. So, uh, because most of the time what happens in shortlisting process also, there are a lot of bias. And shortlisting process is also a very cumbersome process. You keep on is dying with the burden of Excel sheet. And that's precisely happens with <laughs> most of the people. So uh, how a system can really automatically shortlist candidate based on the company's requirement. Right? And you as a human being have to just look at whether this has given the right result or not. Because eventually you will also use those filters to really do that. So let machine only do. So uh, the digitization is not only converting paper-based process to the digital one. Uh, the idea is that it should really go one step ahead in terms of bringing efficiency, cutting down the manual work. But still, if you have to really, again, manually shortlist, then that is not a true digitization, <clears throat> I would feel. Right, if you're really more, parsing software, yeah. okay, if it is resume-based. Yes. Right. CG, CGP or percentage based, hai, that is really simple. Cut out right. that, that's it. Right, right. If right. you need to pick up keywords, uh, which again, software exists, right? right? And you just have to train your AI to do it. Right, right. So, recommender systems and profile yeah. recommender system. Yeah. So, so a student can really have so a lot of startup companies, companies are coming, putting up internship and job requirements. And as a student, I am overwhelmed. Which job to really go and which job? And sometimes you can really miss those jobs. So this profile recommender can really actually offer you relevant job recommendations or internship recommendation to you. And vice versa, it can really recommend profile of relevant candidate to you. And you can really train those AI systems and India doesn't have the dearth of the data. Uh, we are the largest uh, producer of the data. <laughs> so our AI system should definitely beat American AI systems. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, over to you, Sandeep, uh, if you have any comment uh, for all of us, uh, as you are a, a digitization expert. Well, I will just summarize uh, how digitization or digital transformation in this process helps. Obviously, we talked about the end-to-end -end, you know, functionality and transparency visibility. But there are many more benefits. I mean, obviously, online job notification is one where you eliminate manual process of displaying all these notifications, you know, and people, students can really understand where and what kind of jobs are available. 
second benefit i can think about is better communication because university college placement cell they can communicate with students and employers you know likewise and get lot of benefits out of it again mobile placement now with online placement process it minimize the hiring decisions or mm -hmm. losing out on potential hire so that's what definitely is one of the great achievement of digital simplified support because now you have digitized everything so you can conduct online aptitude tests conduct you know other tests mock interviews and understand how quickly you can hire or you know evaluate students hiring cost reduction that's the bottom line you know every um, university or every employer want to do that because cost to manage such huge hiring as i said about that indian idol you know so many students are coming out every year and if this hiring cost is reduced it's a win win for all the parties involved and obviously the last one i would say is getting ready for the future because if you don't do it it's not going to help you anyway so right. i would just summarize with this point thank you yeah you don't have a choice either adopt or perish given <laughs> <laughs> one, one more i would like to highlight here sir uh, online internships is the best uh, this one uh, opportunity for the students now yeah, earlier right. they were at different locations and maybe offline internships that too were less in numbers so those right. were not available in big numbers so mm -hmm. now sitting uh, sitting at one one point student can uh, attend the online internship even sometimes he can attend lectures and rest of the day he can attend online or he can do that work also so that's one of the best benefit even in our case pimpri chintod education trust and nutan group we have almost around 1600 uh, students uh, every year so many of our students did first online courses they did certifications they did coursera was free nptel was free most of the uh, uh, these online uh, course providers were uh, giving their or uh, at very minimal cost or some of them were free so apart from that many students approached even international companies and they did their online internships one of the example i would like to quote here one of the student mr rahul badguzar he belongs to very uh, we can say economically not so good family uh, his dad was working as a cycle repair person right mom goes as a daily wage worker in one of the very small companies but this guy did two internships online in two years and that too he was earning almost 70 to 80000 per month in rupees and then because of forget about money he got excellent knowledge and because right. of this he could get placement in company called data insights with 36 lakhs package wow. right so this was one of the best there are other companies also is package is uh, higher than that but still i i wanted to quote this so uh, there is no bar now for a student right. who is having guts and particularly the fire in the belly attitude no i have to do something i have to get the knowledge for them now there is uh, sky is the limit literally right right no wonderful example quite a inspiring example you gave that this whole digitization muhim i would say has broken down the barriers it can really add wings to individual candidates dream they don't have to really curse themselves that they are born in poor family they are born in some remote location right uh, the knowledge is free access to knowledge access to opportunity and you rightly said this online internship and aict also initiated that dr sasrud they initiated unfortunately he could not join otherwise he would have shared his thoughts right and this online internship is a game changer and uh, i think new education policy there is more trust on uh, online internship we as a company also offers lot of online internship they don't have to really come to the campus they can really do in social media they can do in mobile app development they can really do in machine learning deep learning uh, legacy software development multiple areas and 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 once they do the project we can also extend them the offer letters and i would also appeal uh, all the training and placement officers those who are joining uh, uh, do connect with us uh, do encourage your student to participate in uh, our internship of course we are facilitating other companies as well uh, but that's that's something uh, which is a game changer Uh, so we are left with uh, 10 minutes so i would uh, request all of you to share two minute uh, parting notes and then we close this uh, panel discussion and if there is any question from the audience uh, please do share there is one question from mr sheetal uh, shrinivasa sharma 
uh, to Mr. Sheetal, Professor Sheetal, kindly provide the info related to EPO capacity development program, uh, which were practiced by uh, Maharashtra TPO Association, uh, which may address the concern addressed or expressed by many panelists. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you for asking this genuine question. So, at Maharashtra TPO Association, what we try, we try to give good skill enhancement programs to the students. But at the same time, we have to understand that TPOs first should be aware about what is happening in the industry. And that's why regularly we conduct meets with uh, uh, HR fraternity, technical uh, panel members from the technical experts from the industries. So this is our in, uh, annual event. We make one TPO development uh, program. And uh, in that TPO development program, TPOs from across the country, they can participate. This year, there was huge response. Almost around 520 people were there. And out of them, around uh, 400 TPOs were there from around 12 to 13 states of uh, India. And we had uh, different panel discussions as well as uh, interactions with the industry people. Around uh, 80 industry professionals, right from core companies, IT services, as well as uh, IT product companies. So different uh, sessions were kept. For example, IT product. So how to prepare the students for IT product companies. Right. Apart from that, another session was for core industry because core is a challenge for most of the uh, colleges and then IT services company. And apart from that, one session was there to conduct how uh, uh, one session was on TPO challenges particularly. Right. So right from remote place to say tier one colleges, what are the problems they face at their respective colleges so right. that address uh, the uh, solutions were given to all different kind of TPOs that their problems and then some success stories were shared by these TPOs. So it was a good interaction. If you uh, want to participate, next time we can also involve you. Please share. My email ID is s.ravandale at gmail.com. And yes, uh, links of already conducted events, maybe these different panel discussions as well as different, those are also available. If you wish, please send the mail or through uh, MUNI team. You can, you can get my details and it will be placed for us to uh, share those with you and uh, we, even we keep on evolving we try to get inputs from the tpos what are your challenges and what should be topics of our discussions so we conduct some uh, sessions also for that and it will be pleasure for us to get some problems also so that we internally discuss in our governing council team as well as our tpo fraternity and we try to provide uh, solutions to tpos there are many issues like approvals of the tpos through AICT and um, respective universities because TPO should be stable. They, their uh, even pay uh, payment bands, etc., should be care, taken care of. So uh, this post was not there in the sixth page. So we reached to AICT throughout uh, India. We sent the TPOs the request to send them one letter, send one letter to AICT. And fortunately, uh, the post was then um, uh, included in the sixth page by uh, a Chairman Sir uh, Sasrabuddha Sir had come up. Uh, he had come up with special gazette and that that included the post of tpo also in the uh, in the structure so these things we are we are doing and <coughs> apart from this campuses so almost around 15000 plus students we have placed in last few years through pool campus and off campus recruitment drives and sharing of thoughts uh, what are the problems and how to solve and just uh, problems or trace is there with the tpos it's it's a really uh, we can say uh, 24 by 7 job. Anytime student will call or some teacher will call. Parents have their own pressure. Management has the, its pressure. Admission depends upon um, placement right. statistics. So TPO <laughs> seat is a hot seat in fact. Right. So, um, so we share those uh, pains and then uh, we with uh, by holding hands of each other I think uh, we can we can just share that and it, it gives kind of ventilation, right? Where we the problem should be venting out. So another one TPO can share it with another TPO or group of TPOs so that we can solve and a very positive environment has been created uh, in fact in this reason. Otherwise, we are internally, if we see competitors also, 
but right. the environment was created in such a way that one plus one is not two, but for TPO community, one plus one is always 11. So right. it helps. I have five contacts. Uh, Madan ma'am will have another five, 10 contacts. Sharma ma'am. So everybody has 10, 15 contacts. Let us come together and share all the contacts with each other. It, our students, everybody will get the benefit. And companies have huge number of colleges to go to. But if we keep those uh, good things together, we can even together approach companies which are not in our uh, uh, horizon. Outside right. companies, all India companies, even uh, Maharatna companies and even uh, international companies nowadays we are thinking of. So I think together we can make wonders. A wonderful thoughts, uh, uh, very insightful thoughts, very motivating thoughts, uh, Dr. Sheetal Kumar. Uh, in fact, we also created launch uh, two tools, which is campus outreach and recruiter outreach. So, because most of the colleges and TPOs don't know whom to contact in company, let's say in Accenture or TCS or Swiggy or there, 95% companies which has come in last five years and most of us we don't even hear the name, right? In campus placement circle, only TCS, Accenture, Wipro are known, but. <clears throat> Uh, startup companies are hiring more, right? If you aggregate the number, they actually supersede the larger, but, and there's no central database. So we created a centralized database and we have given a name called uh, Recruiter Outreach. Oh. Wherein, and there are ready templates, what format you will send the email. So with campus request form embedded into email will reach to say thousands of institutions. So every day, five or 10 institutions or companies you can really reach. And these are automated workflow, right? So they will receive requests along with the detail of the profile placement brochure, which is dynamic placement brochure. So we have automated this whole thing. Uh, we, we created, uh, brought in some level of smartness. And you rightly said that this is not a competitive environment for everybody. It is not one plus one. Uh, let's come together and create a better uh, India. Uh, <clears throat> and one parting note from uh, Professor Viva from you, and then we close this panel discussion. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sir, uh, one thing, I, one point I forgot to mention, that is the placement policy. Okay. We all make placement policy, but implementation we would not be able to ensure. So digitalization right. is the only thing where we can, you know, ensure the proper implementation of our placement policies. Right. So this is one more thing. So I yeah. thought I should mention. <laughs> Thank you. That is that is the, if you have a right processes, if you have a right technology tool, this will be enabler of your operating model and your strategy. And that's all the all the whole genesis. And I see that uh, mindset is awakener, uh, and I see leaders like. Uh, Dr. Sheetal Kumar, leaders like uh, Ms. Sharma, leader like Ms. Madan, and Dr. Vibha and Sandeep, I think we will be able to really transform this space. Thank you so much. It was such a wonderful panel discussion. Uh, pleasure to meet you in virtual world and looking forward to meet you in uh, a physical world uh, very soon. And most of you, my open invitation to all of you, if you happen to be in Bombay, Please uh, do connect with us. We would love to really host you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.